Bonsoir et bienvenue. Ce soir, nous accueillons Daniel Gantz, architecte paysagiste exerçant à Zurich. Professeur invité à la section d'architecture, il est chargé de l'enseignement du projet Bachelor en troisième année. Après un apprentissage de jardinier, Daniel Gantz obtient son diplôme d'architecte paysagiste en 1986 au Technicum de Rappersville. Il travaille ensuite quelques années à l'étranger, dans les West Indies, puis en Suisse. En 1995, il fonde son propre bureau à Zurich. Depuis 2008, il enseigne à la Hochschule für Technik de Rappersville. Dans son approche pragmatique, il aborde le thème de l'utilisation de la matière végétale en tant que matériau de construction. Daniel Gans se considère comme un artisan. Il fixe des règles pratiques en ordonnant, en classant, en comparant et en différenciant. La main est là pour amener de l'ordre. Il croit que d'intervenir dans la nature nous rend réceptifs à l'interconnexion qui nous lie à celle-ci. Notre interaction avec la nature et son étude nous apprend à poser les questions justes. Le travail de Daniel Gans englobe aussi bien des projets du secteur privé que du secteur public. En 2002, son projet de la cour du terminal E de l'aéroport international de Zurich est récompensé par le Gold Award 2002. Il a également été nominé pour le prix Meilleure parcelle privée 06, die Besten Gärten 2006, un prix international pour l'architecture des jardins. Voilà, je passe maintenant la parole à Daniel Gantz. Merci beaucoup, Laurent. Unfortunately, I can't speak in French as good as you did. I understood what you said, but I have to speak in English, and I hope that will be fine for you. Um, well, I'm here to show you how I see things and how we work at our studio and especially what we understand under craftsmanship. Starting a, job with craftsman, uh, starting a job begins with craftsmanship. We view our work as a craft. We define practical rules by ordering, classifying, comparing and differentiating. In today's presentation, I will show you our craft by presenting examples of our work. To help what I mean, I will also show you references mainly from art history. These are also meant to show how important it is to broaden one's horizon, to look over the garden fence, so to speak. <clears throat> Without our collection of tools, we cannot work. If a tool is missing, the collection is incomplete and we have difficulty completing the work. We have acquired our tools over the course of time. We care for and look after our tools and rearrange and reorganize them regularly. I personally loan out my tools only in a very, very exceptional case. Our attention in everyday life is directed to a kind of cabinet of curiosity that the world offers and we use it as we would go to a good tool shop. A craft is something you must feel like doing, something you must have a desire to do. Experience is not unimportant because it's memory that allows the craft to become more firmly established. It takes time, patience and perseverance. The craft sets rules. These are predominantly practical rules as a system, ordering and assigning strengths and the intention. 
the art of the craft is revealed in the details. Solid craftsmanship is artistic craft using knowledge, experience and passion. Sorry, oh, it's not going. Here. We gain an understand. Uh, sorry, we gain an understanding of the truth in the craft only through changing perspective from near to far and far to near, capturing the atmosphere and perceiving the ambiance. I use my camera every day as my diary. I follow our interest in art and history, which are important sources of inspiration. Books enlarge our knowledge tra and travel broadens the horizon. Libraries are treasure houses. They are places of quietness and relaxation and they provide access to collections of knowledge. For us, forerunners are persons that have prepared the way in our occupation and whose experience is knowledge and knowledge accompany us in our daily work. Their work radiates strongly in the work proce process and makes it even possible. That's Patti Smith, and I not only admire her for her music, but also for her writing and as a photographer. Observing nature and making comparisons with archaeological precision is of great importance and for a solid piece of work. Ludwig Hall once wrote that art and life go together, that all things are work, and I believe that good craft unites all of life. Here you see Hepatica, a side-by-side -side comparison of botanical forms by Ernest Heckels. What probably my, uh, caught my attention was the fuzziness of hummingbirds with the characteristic hum of their rapid, almost invisible, invisible beating of their wings. Once you have seen them, these invisible or these creatures, which seem to be something between birds and insects, you know how fascinating they are. When light hits the hummingbird's feather, the observer sees an array of changing colors. The image is sometimes fuzzy and ambitious, and our perceptions change subtly. I saw Ross Blechner's painting, Circle of Us, at the Kunsthaus in Zurich some years ago, an exhibition called Birth of the Cool. The stripped pattern in the painting creates the effect of transparent curtain protecting the birds whizzing about in the background. But your eye deceives you. As you look longer at the painting, suddenly the birds in the background become static in contrast with the vibrating pattern of the stripes in the foreground. The surface of the painting changes your perception. One reason this painting has stayed with me, I think, it's because it made me think of the hummingbirds of the West Indies where I once used to live. In our work, we like to be guided by images. These are personal experiences that stay in our memory, the atmosphere caught by the image leads to the start of a work. In this case, the image led to an idea for a project for Terminal Dock E at the Zurich airport some years ago. Taking the example of, a country, of, the, count, uh, of the courtyards that we suggested for the airport terminal, I would like to describe to you how we used the box of tools, how the idea became 
a concept, took shape, and finally became realized. The crafting and the activity is an important component of creative work. Models illustrate the intention and especially the effect of light and shadow. These are things to check and at any time, uh, at any time using a model. Models allow us to try th things out and experiment. That's why we develop our project in our studio mainly on models. There are six inner courtyards enclosed in a glass that penetrates through the interior space of Dock E. A variety of climbing plants grow up to 20 meters tall on a harp of wire cables. Each courtyard houses a climbing plant that stands symbolically for its own world. The plants provide a reference to the botanists and other explorers with scientific curiosity that discovered plants and brought them plant material back to Europe from Brazil, China, India, Mexico and even the West Indies. Like a valuable secret, the plant material is kept behind etched pans of glasses. The glass was treated alternately with acids basis for as long as it took to create the desired effect of light. And it wasn't an easy process. It is the nuance and the worked surface of the glass that the project the desired, uh, pro that projects the desired picture. Many trials and regular trips to the manufacturing facilities were important. Personal contact with the glass craftsmen dialogue and affinity with the task resulted in the satisfactory result. The throw of a shadow by the different leaves and blossoms in the projection of nature is a living image. The sheet of glass becomes a screen conveying the image of the plant material. The viewer's perception is meant to evoke memory from the depths of time. It is only to the at attentive traveler that the plants reveal themselves through a narrow vertical strip of clear glass providing a look inside. The viewer is told a chapter from the history of garden culture, namely from the time of the many travelers of the plant hunters in the 18th and 19th centuries. For centuries, unfamiliar plant material has been collected, cared for, and preserved. Here you see the portrait of a professional plant hunter and explorer from 1933. Actually a profession I always also wanted to do but I ended up as a landscape architect, as you see. So the plant hunters often risk their personal fortune, their health and their lives. They are motivated by botanical interests and a thirst for adventure. Their adventure brought the plant material to Europe. The plants were representatives of strange new worlds. A high point in the presentation of exotic plant material was the Crystal Palace in London, created by Joseph Paxton, 1851. The plants from foreign lands were still unknown and they were very delicate and difficult to transport. Plant material, plant material collected under very difficult conditions was frequently lost in transport. The warding case was developed in the early 19th century by a physician named Nathaniel Ward who had a passion for botany. The cases were designed to keep plants from for foreign shores from dying on the long sea wires to Europe. Protected inside the warding case, 
The foreign plant material could be transported safely over long distances to Europe. The collected plants were then studied by sorting and describing. In the Victorian area, warding cases became even a very popular household decoration. They were often planted with different kinds of ferns. Here you see an example from the beginning of the 19th century, 1829, and a more simpler one later uh, from 1900. Through my fascination with the plant explorers by making use of the images and making references to tradition, to tradition to the tradition in our projects, such as to foreign plant material in the plant courtyards for the airport terminal, we transform history into the present. We bring history into the present day and continue in telling the story. I believe that it is important to answer the questions regarding the site, the material and the assignment for the building step by step to define the content of the ID. Plants grow towards the light. Plants need the correct room temperature and humidity, water and nutrition for prosperity. Here temperature, here at the airport, sorry, here, uh, here at the airport or at the courtyards, temperature and humidity are regulated by the waste heat of the buildings and by movable glass louvers that covered the courtyards. The plants receive a constant level of water to which fertilizers are added regularly. Living material demands affection, but also management and control. A care plan provides information on the work needed in the future. This is what guides development. The periodic care brings experience and a more firmly establishment of the underlying ID. The care plan is one of the gardener's tools. With knowledge of the different plants and all of their specific characteristics, and with understanding of the origins of the material, a deep relationship arises. The craft demands knowledge of the material. With plants, the truth comes to light right away because it's so delicate. Knowledge of the origins, adaptions, light and water result in a practical common sense. By knowing and understanding the material, we understand what we are doing. Initial experience is acquired through seeking out and pre-cultivating the plant material. Devising and implementing something start to conclusion requires a certain obsession. You become part of an ID. My personal enthusiasm for the plant hunters and their wires of discovery and their collecting of the green gold also stands at the center of one of our current projects. In the plan for the design of a library lounge in the old chemistry building at the ETH Zurich, we have reinterpreted one more time the Wardian case. We suggest six glass cases. Ian Hamilton Finlay always said a small task is a sure salvation, and I can agree. The Victorians had a craze for ferns, and they collected ferns with a passion. Ferns were much sought after. As a reference to this fern fever, or pterotomania as it was called at the time, the glass cases at the ETH Zurich will contain a number of remarkable fern species. We will start the actual work with the special plant material for this project this autumn. The selection of the fern will again depend on the site criteria. 
the glass case is themselves outfitted with an automatic misting system will provide an ideal microclimate for the ferns. Let us make use of the cabinet of curiosities filled with objects like the collections in the 16th and 17th century, torn between this and that, eager to learn and, to, and thirsty for knowledge, the capacity to admire and be astonished broadens our foundation of our craft. Symbols, images and atmospheres help us in the attempt to get an idea of the world in its entirety. Our ideas and perceptions of that entirety shape our work. In our gardens we portray and ex externalize our collected interconnections. Here you see floating island to travel around Manhattan Island by Robert Smithson. For the polyterrace at ETH Zurich, we suggested a collection of plants on the roof of the mensa at the ETH cafeteria. Planting on the roof has its own rules to be considered and that can be sometimes quite difficult. This is a central location in front of the dominant main building in front, our planting, and the building, as you know, built by Gottfried Semper. The selection of plants make references to the multicultural place of the learning and we gave the plant collections pleasing names like Mountain Dream, White Wedding, or Indian Summer and Tripoli. In addition, to the attractive presentation, it was also important to us to prepare the students for the new planting early on in the project. For the purpose, we had paper napkins printed for the cafeteria so that everybody at the ETH was exposed to the plant material intentionally or not. <laughs> Let us invite nature and all the vi virtues to our festivals. The world is full of symbols and information and it is difficult to deceive her. Capturing nature makes us receptive to recognize relations and do come closer to the truth. Only comparing and discussing Distinguishing leads to recognition and understanding. Therefore, ordering, classifying, comparing and differentiating, as I said, becomes so important. Let me read an article I read in the newspaper some time ago, a very beautiful article written by a German writer called Marcel Bayer, and he told a story about meeting a zoologist who worked in a museum in Germany. Bayer's story goes like this. I met the curator of an ornithological museum, Dr. Siegfried Eck, who showed us some dried bird skins from his collection. He had already told us how important the surface feel of the individual bird skin was for the work of the researcher. This he now demonstrated. He took up a crow in his hand and touched it carefully. He held the dry bird skin with feathers in his fingers and moved his underarm lightly up and down in the air as if estimating the weight of their bird skin. Dr. Eck said that he sometimes sits for weeks looking at the group of bird skins that he has spread out on his desk in order to sort them. 
first he supposes or even just guesses that he might be looking at two species at the minimum but at very closely related species. There are no song profiles or genetic analyses available to aid identification. He groups and regroups the bird skins. He places them before him in ordering based on his most inconspicuous characteristics. He hesitantly slides the one bird skin back and forward from one row to another, and then it is his hesitation that brings him to the realization that the ordering cannot be correct. So he starts again. He starts again from the beginning and, the re and rearranges the bird skins according to different criteria. Through his focus, this focused concentration, he comes to learn the precise futures of each bird skins. He commits to the memory the peak and plumage of each individual bird, inhaling from morning to evening the specific features of each bird skin. He commits to the memory, oh, sorry, uh, but at some point it suddenly happens after all the weeks of doubting and waiting and, stand and studying, it happens really fast. He can suddenly demonstrate on the basis of outer appearance of certain bird skins that he has before him not one species as had been previously as assumed, but three different subspecies. Dr. Eck said that he imagined that the work of an artist might might proceed in a similar way, sudden recognition. And I think this, how it's described here, has a lot to do how we work. Albert Einstein once said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and all science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger who cannot longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is, a good, is as good as dead. Simply, his eyes are closed. A lot of work went into that, is what we often say when we see a beautiful object and sense the care and attention and the ability of the person who created the object. In a craft, you find people's knowledge about the production of things. We encounter this often and learn a lot from it. Often it is only partial se sequences of a task that brings us in contact with other craftsmen, people, specialists. We find support in, we find support in them their drive energizes us, it helps to go forward. An example of this is our collaboration with the artist Piero Maspoli. Our studio worked with Maspoli on a project for a private house. Maspoli's work, mainly out of, a sa of sandstone and granite, creates strong, roughly worked stones that produce a field of tension in the dialogue between art, architecture, and nature. Here, a granite boulder with a charismatic reddish crust leads to the entry area to the house. The massive boulder was quarried out by the artist himself, led by his passion to his work, must be worked to the point of physical injury to wrest the stone from the cliff factoring a rip during the quarrying. The stone was cut so precisely that it skillfully covered up to the difference in height between street and entrance, and it now stands with a strong connection to the new building and the surroundings. The granite block, which weighs more than 20 tons, was selected for this site based on its strong expression in form and positioned very precisely. For sensitive tasks, 
in the preservation of monument gardens, good craft can be important for the survival of cultural heritage. It is especially when working on preservation projects that the landscape architect works in alignment with tradition. The same work, if it is a task with historical value, makes us carry out our craft with respect and reverence. It is also here that lost skills are recovered. Finding the right experts and specialists is a key task for success and for pleasing final result. For a pleasing final result, we succeeded in finding the right specialist for our restoration of Tiefenbrunnen Park and Bad on the Lake of Zurich, a park from the 50s. An example is the Kneis surfacing with polygonal paving stones in a park which demanded the work of a specialist. The hand chiseling of the edges and the laying of the stones successfully met the demanding requirements. The poetically inclined garden lover of the 19th century walked his property in boots and carrying a walking stick to determine correct placement of routes and pathways. The craftsman starts his work with the sowing of seeds. The garden is an enclosed piece of land. It is here that the possibility of a place ca can be plumped out. The garden unites nature and culture. Here, truth can be seen. No, now, I would like to show you some selected projects to illustrate our closeness to craftsmanship. This cement paver from around 1900 is, built, is, a, is the building stone and the puzzle of a great garden, uh, of a garden in Zurich. This was to be newly laid along with a new garden project after the house was repaired. Acquiring knowledge is always the first step. <clears throat> Looking closely at things is craftsmanship. It is search for traces. The makeup of the size and color of the individual grain of the cement paver formed the beginning of the work. This requires careful attention as you can see. Gardens as monuments contain a memory and are places of remembrance. Traces of history are found and displayed. Today's needs for the garden are taken into account. Here you see the laying out of, this, of the patio at this garden and the new plantings. As I mentioned earlier, we are guided in our work by images. Here you see a piece of work by David Nash showing some twumps. Some years ago, I encountered in Wales these twumps. A twump derived from the whale, Welsh word trumpets means a mount. A mount with a cloud-like shape like the one on the right side at Powys Castle. As you can see here, a huge hedge on the right-hand side, also at Powys Castle. Behind an apple grove, the development of a young trump in one of our projects in Zurich is growing. Precision craftsmanship can extend to perfection. The time factor plays a this decisive role not only when falling back on old arts and skills. Gardens are very strongly subject to the dynamic of the element of time, the changing time of day, the changing season, the changing decades. decades. To, give form to, to, to give form 
to something, you have to be able to understand nature and study nature. We found our examples and models in nature by walking through landscape and documenting them. Mountains, forests and meadows, but also city landscapes. Here on a walk in the highlands. Making observations is what makes landscape understandable and helps us to see connections. Only this makes that transformation process possible from craft to landscape architecture. Here a wall, a stone wall in one of our projects. In our search for new forms of expression and uses of materials, we hit up in a century-old tradition of charcoal production. Charcoal burners traditionally built semicircle charcoal kilns out of beech wood stacked in layers. Staffs one meter long were stacked in a circle, covered with a layer of straw and then packed airtight with earth and ashes. Depending on the size of the charcoal kiln, the production of charcoal after starting the fire and a temperature from 4 to 500 degree could take from 8 to 14 days. We couldn't wait as long. Charcoaling for our use for a garden step consists in charring the wood using a flame. This is done by hand, for the flame is applied to create a charred layer. The charcoaling process is controlled using steam, but without allowing the boards to go out of shape. The best material for this process are beech and oak. Pines with, it, with a lot of resin wouldn't be hardly suitable, as they are so flammable. To prevent the charred wood from later staining, the wood can be oiled. Craftsmanship is an interplay of the mind, the heart, and the hands. This summer, some member of our studio participated in a workshop with Bichoy Chain held at the Sitterwerk in St. Gallen. Probably most of you know him since he has been here at EPFL earlier this year. At his studio, Mumbai, Bichoy Chain works in close dialogue with craftsmen. Concept work is one part of the work and designing is the other. However, it is only with when working the craft in the reflecting upon the activities of one hands or using tools that the true leaps of inspiration occur. Craftsmen thinking and activity are based on curiosity. The craft takes you beyond the superficial level. The craft takes you deeper. And it is good to know that motivation to learn craftsmanship is more important than talent. Bichoy liked to say, start and see what happens. He meant the beginning of the process is the more, most important. And I do agree with him. Practical work is an exercise in patience to acquire impressions. We become a craftsman by working on a project together with other craftsmen. Setbacks and uncertainties spur us on, strength, strengthen our ambition. We build landscapes and gardens together with you, architects, with gardeners, with engineers, with historians, construction workers, photographers, metal workers, carpenters, artists, and other specialists. 
our interaction with nature and study of nature teaches us the right question to ask. The work comes into being in dialogue with people and nature. A good craftsman works with collected knowledge, experience and a lot of passion. I want to finish this lecture with this quote from a letter on the elements of botany addressed to a lady written by Jean-Jacques Rousseau saying nature is full of these wonders, dear cousin. We are admitted to the view of a very small portion of it only. There is little hope than that we should be able to understand its relation fully or to unravel all its mystery. Thank you. Merci beaucoup pour cette belle conférence. Euh, Peut-être qu'il y a des questions dans la salle. Oui Une question I'm Pierre von Mais. Uh, I would like to ask you one question. I mean, uh, I'm first of all very happy that you're here and that uh, our School of Architecture is looking out into the garden sometimes, not only out to the city, but into the garden which is part of our cities. And uh, I'm very happy for that. I think uh, I would recommend my students, if I had some, uh, to go and follow your studio. Uh, one thing, of course, which uh, in your lecture doesn't really come through, but I would like to have a little bit of an idea of your attitude, is that in fact, one of our problems today are not only gardens or just this more um, romantic connection to gardens. Uh, our, one of our very acute problems is landscapes at a very large scale too. I mean, how do you go what do you suggest to our students to deal with landscapes? Landscapes which are modified by highways, uh, TGV, uh, um, big installations like um, um, you know, uh, power plants and uh, transport of power. And I think there is a lot to do there. I, I, and I'm sure you would like to work on that. Well, basically, I understand your question. And obviously, you're right. There are lots of uh, things to do out in the landscape. And it's not always so romantic as we sometimes like to see at it. And I tell my students here, the first thing I said, let's, we go out there and we go for a walk. And on this walk, we go out to the landscape and we have to ask the place what the place needs, what the place really needs for. And as I find out, sometimes, or especially with art, or, or, or put that way, it's not always so easy to find out really what the place needs since there is no clear program asked for for the, for, for, for the landscape out there. It's not like with a building where you have, most of the time you have a clear program what the building should do or should, 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 uh, should do, right? Needing some 
some rooms for teaching, teaching or, 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 or uh, it's kind of clearly defined, right? And in the landscape, you really have to go out there and you have to f feel the place and to analyze the place to find out what's really the place is asking for. That's our approach, how we deal with these landscapes. We go out there and ask the place what it's needed, what it needs, what it is, what, 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 what the place is asking for. That's what we look after. D'autres questions, peut-être Alors, je vous remercie d'être venus euh, si nombreux à cette conférence et on se réjouit de vous voir euh, la prochaine fois. Merci. Et merci à Daniel Gans. Merci.